Hey guys, Sun here. Uh, I started using Tails more and more. I use it to create my TOTP tokens. I use it to back up sensitive data. I use it to browse the web using Tor. Um, I mean, I use it to access Electrum. That's how I handle donations. I use it for a whole bunch of things. The problem is I also use Mac because Mac is more convenient for a lot of things, including editing videos and a whole bunch of things. There's an episode on why I still use Mac, even though it's not the most privacy conscious alternative, and I'll link to it in the description. That said, one problem that I've had that I wasn't able to solve is how can I move sensitive data such as passwords or private keys from my Mac to Tails without going through the internet or putting it on a USB flash drive, which could compromise the integrity of this compartmentalized Tails computer. Um, something that you guys have probably heard if you've been following this channel for some time is I'm fascinated with QR codes. I actually created a piece of technology that can be used to create encrypted paper backups in the context of Bitcoin. I'll link to the episode in the description. Um, but QR codes have one very dangerous property. I actually reached out a while back to the people who manage KeePass XC, that's a default password manager on Tails, and I was like, hey guys, it would be amazing if you could display a password instead of copying it to a clipboard, display it as a QR code. And then you could use a QR code reader on a separate computer to bridge the air gap between compartmentalized computers. And the answer that I got was, yo, that would be terribly insecure. Anyone with line of sight would be able to compromise a password even if they're far away. And that was actually true. That said, I still believe that feature would be useful. But what they said is it's too dangerous. People might not be aware of this kind of exploit. So we don't want to do it. So that kind of left me empty handed. You know, if I want to move a password, say on this computer here, I have this super secret password. If I want to move this and that password is very long, I don't wanna to have to type it, especially if this keyboard here, for instance, that's an English US keyboard and the one that I use on my computer is a French Canadian. So it's really complicated. So I was like, I could use QR codes. So I initially built this prototype where I was able to show a QR code on one computer and read it on another. That said, Tails does not have a built-in QR code reader. So first things first, you know, how, how would that even work? And second, how can we make it secure? How can we make it so that line of sight exploits are not a big deal? Well, I am super pumped to share that I actually created a little app which is called QR Bridge. And that little app is designed to do exactly this. So I'll show you how it works. Uh, the app will be available for $19 on the store. More on this in a second. So if I pop open QR Bridge, uh, what happens then is I have this little window here, which is connected to the webcam of the computer. Uh, and then uh, say I copy my super secret password uh, like this, and I then go in QR bridge and I select create from clipboard secure. What happens next is I have this QR code, which says hello. And if I double click on Tails and I open the app image build of QR Bridge, so it's cross-platform between Mac OS and Tails, I can then see this here. So what's happening here is I now have the webcam of this, which is on, but the true magic, and I'll put the volume here as high, whoa, that's actually this, I mean the volume. Then if I scan the screen here, did you hear? Boop. Well, what just happened here is it actually copied that password to this computer. So I can then paste it. Obviously this is insecure, but I could paste it here. So I was able to bridge the air gap using QR codes. But now you guys may say, son, you mentioned that people with line of sight, especially if you're putting that QR code as big on a screen like this, it's a target. It is, but QR bridge uh, is actually also a regular QR code scanner. So what I mean here is, I can also go in source, capture from camera, and then I can actually capture this QR code again. Now, I'm not sure if this worked. Yes, it did. So what I'm seeing here now is this. So this and this is actually not that password. So what's happening here is uh, QR Bridge uses elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman to establish a key exchange. And that's what you guys saw initially when it said hello. So both computers start by saying hello with, you know, to each other. What they're doing is they're exchanging public keys from which 
a shared secret can be derived. And then that shared secret is converted using SHA-256 to an AES-256 bit encryption key. And then what we're seeing here, the secret, that is the IV or initialization vector, if my memory is correct, and the encrypted payload separated with those little two dot things. So QR Bridge is doing this with essentially what I believe is military grade encryption. And it also does it in a way that has uh, perfect secrecy or per forward secrecy, perfect forward secrecy, meaning that if someone has compromised one of those key exchanges, they can and they successfully brute force it, which I believe is quite impossible. Well, they cannot use the encryption key to brute force things in the future. So it is ephemeral. So QR Bridge is just this beautiful app that can read QR codes both on Mac OS and Linux in the context of this app image build. And actually neither Mac or Linux has, I believe, a built-in QR code reader like we have on, I on, on iOS. Um, and it actually has another trick up its sleeve. So this one I'll demo on this computer here so I can close this here. If I pop open a browser, uh, let's say here, and I go on to a website that has a QR code. So let's just type QR code. I have this little QR code here. If I pop open QR bridge, this is revealing a lot here actually, hopefully not too much. And I go into source and I say capture from desktop. Boom, it actually detected it from the desktop. And that's super useful because I use tails to back up hashes for TOTP, so time-based one-time passwords, that's 2FA. And I do this on tails. But sometimes some websites don't allow you to copy the actual string that is, you know, under that QR code. The QR code is just like a QR representation of that string. And I want to back up that string in the password manager of Tails, which is air gapped away from my main computer. That means that I can reissue a YubiKey, for instance, that I'm using for TOTP. More on this in a future episode, by the way. So I needed that feature, and that feature is how. Uh, Yubico actually does it with Yubico Authenticator, but I wanted a way that is outside of Yubico that I could actually copy this, so I built it. So anyways, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, if you go on my website, sanutsen.com, and you go into the store, and you go into QR Bridge, you can actually download, uh, well not download, but you buy it, so you pay 19 bucks US, and it will send you by email to the billing email uh, a download link for both the DMG Mac version, the app image Linux version, and a little PDF guide that explains how to set things up. So I hope this is gonna be useful to you guys. Uh, that could be an interesting gift idea for Christmas for the very tinfoiled hat nerds out there. I know I am massively excited by this. Uh, I've started to lose faith in privacy. I don't think privacy really exists anymore, but I do still believe that we have a pretty decent level of privacy when we're using tails, when we're compartmentalizing sensitive use cases away from Mac. So for instance, if you're a Bitcoiner and you have an Electrum wallet, well, I wouldn't recommend, especially if, if you're not using a hardware wallet, I wouldn't recommend doing this on your Mac, but doing it on tails is much more secure and it also means that all the uh, exchanges that Electrum has with the Electrum servers are done over Thor there are still conceptual problems with Bitcoin privacy, but at least it's much harder for that server to know that it's you interacting with it. Although one may reveal our IP address, but since it's going through Tor, it's much more secure. Uh, while I'm at it, actually, if you guys are into Bitcoin and you want to learn about Bitcoin fundamentals, so that is like privacy and security and how to set up a secure Bitcoin wallet uh, using a hardware wallet, uh, I will be uh, giving this little masterclass so there will be this bitcoin self-custody for beginners masterclass it's a two-hour um, masterclass in which i'm going to hold your hand throughout uh, setting up an electrum wallet and i'm going to be sharing a massive amount of intel on why bitcoin is not that private what we can do about it why it's recommended to have uh, our own full node and all of this kind of stuff so if you're interested by this it's 199 us you can book a seat i think it's going to be about 10 people per session uh, so that we get, we get to like throw a ball to each other and I get to answer your questions. Uh, and that will happen on Saturday, January 8th, 2022. So if you want to start the new year securely and privately in the Bitcoin space, check that out. So two little things here that are made available to treat yourself. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.